Hello again AMD fans. Some of you may have seen my Vega 64 videos. A few years ago, I got a couple Sapphire Vega 64 Nitro Plus cards that were really good silicon, and they have served me well over the past several years. But as some of you may know, I retired recently. And as a retirement present to myself, I purchased an XFX Speedster Merc 319 6900 XT Limited Black earlier this year. Good lord, that's a long name. Anyway, yes, I got it before the prices came back down to sane levels, so I did spend a bit too much for it. But I knew that would be the case going in, and since this was a special occasion, I decided for just the third time in my entire life that I was going to treat myself regardless of the cost. I regret nothing. I could not be happier with this card. I believe it is one of the best air-cooled 6900 XT models, and I wanted to share how well it performs before the 7900 series comes out next month. This may also serve as a bit of a comparative baseline where power, overclocking potential, and performance ranges are concerned. Now, if you are familiar with Buildzoid's videos where he discusses the various 6900 XT PCBs, he mentions there are two versions of the 6900 XT silicon, the XT and the XTXH. I will leave a link to his video in the description below. It's worth a watch because there's a ton of information there. My card comes with the XTXH silicon and it is highly binned. Now, this does not mean that I can overclock it any higher, but what it does mean is that I can get very high clocks at very reasonable power. And the fact that this model only has two PCIe power connectors is just a hint at what it can do. My card will max out at 2790 on the core at 1.2 volts, which is the max stock voltage. However, the sweet spot that I found was just a hair below that at 2750 core on just 1.175 volts. So I could undervolt it by 25 millivolts and still overclock it to 2750. At this speed and voltage, with the GDDR6 VRAM clocked at 2150, this card pulls between 240 and 275 watts with averages around 255 watts. That is outstanding performance for a sub 300 watt card. But that's not even the best part. At 2750 core, the cooler on this card keeps the edge temps around 65 Celsius and the hot spot around 85 Celsius. And that's with the fans at 40 to 45% or so. With the case cover on, I can barely hear them, and they do not have any noticeable tone. Just the sound of white noise or rushing air. And most of the time, I cannot tell if that's the sound of the moving air coming from the GPU fans or from the 360mm radiator I have exhausting air at the top of my case. To put things in perspective, AMD's max boost for the reference 6900 XT is 2250. The XFX card pushes this boost up to 2495, or a gain of 10%. And my particular sample is able to easily hit 2750, or a gain of another 10 to 11% on top of that. So it is fair to say that the overclock headroom on the 7 nanometer RDNA2 6900 XTXH silicon is 10 to 20% depending on quality. However, RDNA3 is a new architecture, a new process, and may not have as much potential initially. Being the first generation of RDNA3, I'm anticipating only a small gain from overclocking, similar to what we saw when Zen first debuted in March of 2017. My first Ryzen 7 1700 had a max boost frequency of 3.7 GHz and I was just barely able to squeak out 4 GHz on water. That's just an 8% overclock. But in April of 2018, just 13 months later, AMD iterated on the design, released the 2700, 
raise the stock boost up to 4.1 GHz out of the box, with 4.2 to 4.3 being reachable with good supporting parts. That's a stock boost 11% higher than the 1700, and an overclock boost about 14% higher than the 1700. So how might this translate to the 7900 series? Well, take this with a large grain of salt because this is just my personal speculation. But if the stock 7900 XTX does 2300 on the shaders and 2500 on the front end, and we give the initial release a modest 5% bump, that means overclocks may fall in the 2400 and 2600 ranges, with water cooling getting maybe 100 megahertz more. But if AMD iterates on this design, as they nearly always do, I can reasonably see a 7950 XTX six to nine months later with improved silicon, getting up to the 2600 and 2800 range out of the box, possibly even with some more cash added and better voltage efficiency. We'll just have to wait and see. Until then, I will leave you with the performance numbers on my 6900 XTX-H as shown in this video, and a fond thank you for watching and listening to an old retired IT guy rambling about tech.